Welcome to episode three of the Cranky Fan Podcast, part of the FL Teams channel. I'm your host, the Cranky Fan, and this episode tonight is brought to you by, once again, nobody. We have no sponsors, so someday, hopefully, one of you sponsors will come out there and support us. But until then, I am, like I said, your host, the Cranky Fan, and tonight we are talking not only Rays baseball, but we are talking AL East. We are recording this on Tuesday night during the All-Star Game, and hopefully you didn't see Shane McClanahan lay an egg. So, uh, oh well. But I have on a special guest tonight, and for all of you who watch the Just Giants podcast with myself and Football Grump, or if you listen to Talking Giants, you know my guests. And if you don't, you will get to very shortly. He's the one, the only, Nikki Snacks. Nikki, how you doing? Crank, my friend. I'm doing. I'm doing fantastic. I will say, uh, the All Star Game. We were just talking about it off the air. Is almost boring us to sleep. I, I don't even. Want, maybe we don't bring up that first inning of uh, uh, the pitcher for the AL. Let's let's not. You know. <laughs> I, I, was there was there an All Star game? I didn't even know there was one going on. So no, I think I, yeah, I think it was. I think it was nothing. Um, and like you were saying, it's for the kids. So he, I think he was just giving Goldschmidt a meatball. Yeah. It was a base hit up the middle that could have been stopped. But it was, listen, it's not his fault. It's not. His That's fault. okay. It's okay. Um, so I guess you're asking why do I have this fellow New Yorker on here when we're talking, you know, on the FL Teams channel? Well, you know. During football season, Snacks and I are brothers. You know, we tailgate right. together before every Giant game. We, you know, commiserate. He's on our podcast all the time. We're, you know, we're panelists on other shows and stuff. But like everybody else, like in New York, once it's no longer football season, no longer basketball season, we become divided brothers. He is a big time Ranger fan, and obviously I'm a Lightning fan, and he is a big Yankee fan, and I'm a Rays fan. So we figured we'd take this to the show, and I told him as soon as I get a solo pod going, I would bring him on immediately, and we can debate Yankees' Rays. And I think it'd be a good the start of an ongoing segment of having him on here, so we can kind of touch base and see, you know, what the Yankees are doing, what the Rays are doing, you know, have a little debate about it, see what's going on, settle some misconceptions that maybe each fan base has on the other side, and, and just have a good time. So. I guess next we, we can start off. We're at the All Star break now. We're just over halfway of the season. What is the state of the New York Yankees? Yeah. So, uh, and to your point, uh, football season is is our favorite, and uh, we were so glad to tailgate this year. We had a lot of fun, uh, even in a mi another miserable season of a lot of losses. Uh, we know how to tailgate. We had a good time. We even went to a Knicks game together because we are brothers united in our Knicks and fandom. And we didn't get thrown out. That was we did exciting. not get thrown out. We were actually getting beers poured down our throats by people behind us. So that was really great. <laughs> I'll post that in the show notes. If, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, but the state of the Yankees. I mean, listen. I am. I am as diehard of a Yankee fan as as anybody there is. But I'm also a realist, and I I know their record, best in baseball, and this 14 game lead, which is just insane. I could have never expected it coming into this year. I actually thought the Yankees may not make the playoffs. They'd be middle of the pack team, um, but they are proving me wrong. It's uh, so, so the state of the Yankees, I want to say is it's really good right now. How sustainable it is. That remains to be seen because they have not been hit with a major injury yet. So, uh, and I know that's going to be a huge talking point when we when we go to the raise side of this. And, um, but the Yankees have been very fortunate health wise where they're able to stay on the field. Their pitching has been over their heads, maybe outside the last two or three weeks. Um, but to me, the state of the – they – I, I want to say they're the best team in baseball. I really do. But I personally – I just don't believe it. I don't. I watch them every night. I watch all the outs. I watch all the innings, pitches, everything. Um, I am petrified of the Astros. I think the Astros are probably a better overall team. Um, I don't really watch the NL, so I don't want to give too much of an opinion on that. Um, but it's very difficult for me to say, even sitting here as a Yankee fan with the best record in baseball, that we're the best team in baseball. Because I, I see the flaws. I see a, I see a bullpen that's getting burnt out. Um, I see starters like Cortez that is well on pace to exceed any inning 
innings he's ever thrown in his career. So you know that burnout is coming. Severino finally went down. Tyone has come back down to earth. You know, you know, I'm not my, the biggest Garrett Cole fan. He's he's been fine, but I don't trust him in a big game. Jordan Montgomery, I will always trust because I just think he's reliable and he's never going to pitch you out of a game. Three runs you know, with that offense, you should be able to score three runs. But it all comes down to the health. And so right now, the state of the Yankees, I think, is is in a good spot. Um, I mean, even they're locked and loaded if they want to make a huge trade at the deadline because they have a very good farm system. They have two shortstop prospects that are, I think, top 50, uh, with Anthony Volpe being top 15, I want to say, top 10. And they're well-equipped to to add reinforcements to a team that is already 90,000 games over 500 with a lead that is, I don't want to say insurmountable because it's baseball, Susan, as you know, and anything can happen. But right now, the state of the Yankees is pretty damn good, and uh, I am pleasantly surprised. However, I do see the flaws in this team that I think we'll we'll touch on a little bit. I think that's one of the few honest assessments I've heard from Yankee fans in a long time, where Yankee fans are funny. It's either, you know, the sky is falling or we're the greatest team of all time and we're back where we're supposed to be. And that I, you know, I, like you, I didn't think the Yankees are a playoff team this year. I thought they were going to go under, what was their over under before the season started? Like 88 or 89. I thought they were like, yeah, I think it was like 87 and a half, something like so right around there. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see the pitching holding up. I was just like, well, where are they going to get all these innings and where are, where's the great arms? You know, Gary Cole was coming off of a year where we're not really sure what he was anymore after the, uh, you know, the issues as he was having uh, a bullpen that on paper could be pretty good, but it's always banged up. You know, that you have the, the wife beater is your closer is always either hurt or just ineffective. Um, I, I just, I, and they just, okay, look, teams get hot and it happens every year where a team usually happens like, second half into the playoffs her team wins the world series it's like out of nowhere they were 500 on august 1st and they just go on this insane run and the yankees did it early yeah. and um you know they've been dominating in the division and but the thing is you look at their lineup and when i was down in st pete the last time i was at two of the games and and again i'm it's not a one-to-one relationship saying well well the Rays lineup is this like forget the Rays for a minute when I look at the lineup, you know, other than Judge and Stanton, and I guess LeMahieu a little bit, nobody really frightens me in that lineup. These guys are just all, you know, they're playing out of their ass. Guys like Carpenter and, and these guys, like you don't expect. Trevino, yeah. yeah, like Trevino yeah. is. I remember when, when you traded Sanchez, it's like they have no pitcher. Who's pitching for them? I, I'm right. sorry, who's catching for them? Catching, and, yeah. Yeah, and the guy's been fantastic. He's so, an all star. Yeah, exactly. He's an all-star. So it's just like, you know, career years and just a career first half, you know, the sustainability of it. And the good thing is you have the big lead. You have the 14-game lead. So you don't have to have pedal to the metal for the second half of the year. If you want to, you know, somebody miss a start to kind of save innings or, you know, you don't have to go full throttle, there's plenty of cushion. I, I just, you know, when you get to the playoffs in a short series – how confident in that starting rotation? Cause usually it comes down to starting pitching. Always. Like that's yeah. where I feel like with the Rays, you know, we have 18 guys on the injured list and that's pretty much the main reason that in, in my opinion, the incompetence of Kevin cash handling a bullpen. That's why we are where we are. That's why we're six games over 500 only. And that's why we're, you know, a distant second in division, but get us in the playoff series and, and get McClanahan and, and get this rotation, I feel it's like almost 50-50 you can win a series. Oh, How confident I, How confident are you feeling about that rotation in, in a short series? So if, if, With the Yankees rotation? I Yeah. Not yet. I'm not confident at all. I mean, outside of Cole, again, your second best pitcher has been Cortez, and I was just mentioning that he's going to go – he's going to way exceed his innings limit. So you have to expect burnout towards the end of the season. Is he going to be effective in the playoffs? Probably not. Severino's down right now. He's been very good. Tyone's been – Tyone started off amazing, but his last month has been an atrocity. And, again, Montgomery, he's – I like Montgomery a lot, but he's not going to be that dominant pitcher in the playoffs. He's probably going to let up two, three runs. And when the Yankees' offense is constructed of four or five guys that you really don't want to face, a pitcher can work around that, and two, three runs may be difficult to score by, especially when the home run ball isn't coming against good pitching. So 
I, it, it's very it, – everybody's like, oh, go trade for Juan Soto. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I mean, cool. That would be great. That's not what this team needs is Juan Soto. This team needs another bona fide stud as a pitcher, and I think Luis, a, a Luis Castillo type can put them over the edge. I don't really know the pitchers on the market right now. There's a lot of bad baseball teams going on, um, mm-hmm. but nobody that's really like worthwhile having outside of Castillo. And another thing, with a 14-game lead, and like you were saying, I, I, that was a really good point. Most teams get hot late and go on to win. Like, look at the Braves. They were like under 500 on August 1st, and they went on to win the World Series. The Yankees just came out of the gates firing. They just – unbelievable. And the 14 game is a lot. 14 game is a, a 14 game lead is a lot. But the AL East is really good. Really, really good. And even Baltimore is no, oh, let's go to let's go to Cannon Yards and sweep these guys. They can hit. They can hit. The the Orioles, they're young, they're fiery, they can play. I you know what? I since they're not a threat right now in the division, I I enjoy watching their success. I think it's very cool. People thought they were going to be an atrocity and they're not. But that's besides the point. Um so no, I'm not. I'm not confident in the staff. Uh, I, I Clay Holmes and Michael King, I trust immensely in the bullpen. I, I know a lot of Yankees Twitter doesn't, but I'm a, I'm a big Wandy Peralta fan. I think he's a very good left-handed pitcher out of the pen. Um, apparently, they're getting Zach Britton back in in August. I don't know how effective he's going to be, uh, but that could be a big lift. I don't trust the world as Chapman further than I could throw a rock. So that he means nothing to me. Um, I would like to see I, – I, listen, Severino has been a very good starter, but I thought Severino, where he could be most effective for – I mean, not even this year, but maybe for the rest of his career because I don't think he's ever going to be, you know, a 27-30 uh, game starting a, a year. I think he could have played that perfect Phil, Phil Hughes 2009 seventh and eighth inning role. Just mm-hmm. be come out there dominant throwing darts, 25 pitches, that's it. Throwing darts, 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 just striking people out. And it was very effective last year when he came back into the pen. That's really when the Yankees started turning it around, and they had that lethal weapon of Severino coming in. I thought that would have been the right move. But as of now, like, yeah, he's pitched really well in the starting rotation, but it's he's just got hurt again. Like, it's not going to last. It's not going to last. So it's, it's just a matter of holding your breath every single game with these pitchers because – I, I really – I don't trust them, and I don't trust their offense to slug out of it. And especially in the playoffs when you're facing good pitching literally every inning. It's not, you know, some slap dick pitcher getting thrown in the <laughs> fifth inning. Excuse my language. But it, it, it's it, – it, 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 so I, while I'm, I'm optimistic, I'm still very cautiously optimistic more so than I would ever be optimistic. And um, to your other point about, like, the, the lineup – I do want to throw in there that Glaber Torres has had a resurgence of a year, and I do think that's more the Glaber that they traded for. However, mm-hmm. th- does that last? Because he's been really bad the last two years. So, you know, going back to going back to Juan Soto, I mean, Yankee fans have to realize, and if they haven't noticed it by now, Yankees are not going over the luxury tax. They do no. not want to spend. So, it's easy to say, "Oh, give me, I'll give you this prospect, this prospect, this prospect." The reason why he's being traded is. He just turned down a four hundred million dollar contract offer. Four hundred forty million. What do you think he's going to want in a city like New York and playing for the Yankees? I mean, there's a reason why the Yankees don't have Bryce Harper. There's a reason why they don't get you know these big time big contracts anymore. Is they're trying to show some level of prudency, I guess, and and being smart. And you know, Yankee fans can complain all they want. Oh, why don't we get Soto and stuff? But the way they built this team. You know, is a nice young core. You know, the judge are going to have to figure out what they're going to do with him. I think they're going to resign him. I, 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 I really do. I, I think this is a little bit of a cat and mouse game. At the end of the day, judge's value, it's kind of like Derek Jeter to me. It's like your value is highest in New York. You're not the same. You're just, you know, you're another great player somewhere else, but you are Aaron Judge in New York. He's Arguably the, the face of baseball playing He's, in pinstripes, yeah. He's that linear, you know, in terms of importance of the franchise, Ruth, Gehrig, DiMaggio, Mantle, Jeter, him. You know, yeah. a guy who can potentially play his entire career, you know, break all sorts of records with them, be known as number 99 the way three, four, five, seven, and, and two are. Um, 
that's his value it, it, the, for the for the bigger money. Uh, he, I agree. There are teams that can probably afford to, to to get him that don't mind spending over the luxury tax and paying whatever it takes, but it, it's not the same. So I, I I I think they'll they'll keep him. And I think he knows that too. Um, and listen, they offered him a fair deal before the season. Now God God bless him that he went out there and he's just way outperforming that contract now. Like he's gonna blow that out of the water. Um, I I understand the Yankees timid. A timidity, timidness to give him nine years at 30 years old because he has broken down before. But when you, like you're saying, when you got the, when you got a guy that could carry on a lineage of, of some of the biggest legends in, mm-hmm. in baseball history, not even just Yankee history, mm-hmm. like Aaron judge, a, a guy that's six foot seven, just a giant with a smile like that. Cool, calm, collected. It would be, I'm telling you, Yankee fans would burn the city to the ground if they're going to let him walk. It would be the biggest fan revolt since – I'm not sure. Do you remember when the Rangers didn't re-sign Messier and he went to Vancouver? I, I do not, but I do know the uproar that oh. it, what happened from it. Yeah. You know, at, at the time, I was actually living in Florida, and I was up in New York for work when that whole process was going down when he signed. And that was peak Mike and the Mad Dog. That was the venom for these calls at the time because it was like Messier reached that level of Willis Reed. He reached that level of Reggie Jackson. And you know, most the, the people in you know in Florida don't know, okay, there's guys that are heroes down in Florida. There's, you know, you know the guys like the Leroy Selmans and everything who are, are kind of legends down there and even like Gator greats and everything. It's not the same as in New York where if you do it up there, you don't become just a sports hero. You become a God, you know, that the rest of your life, Joe Namath, uh, Willis Reed, uh, you know, these are guys that will never pay for a meal ever again. They'll never go even to a restaurant without getting a standing ovation. And, you know, Joe Namath was traded at the end of his career. Uh, uh, Clyde Frazier was traded at the end of his career. Messier, I guess, might have been a little past his prime, but was still super functional and still good. And they wouldn't sign him. Uh, this yeah. is pre-salary cap, too. So I, right, I, I think right. I think he's coming back. I mean, they could do all they want to kind of stay in the luxury tax, but at the end of the day, they, they have to. I, I think yeah, I, absolutely. And and on both ends of the spectrum, they both have a lot to lose. Like, well, okay, Aaron Judge, where are you going to go? You're going to go back to California and play for the San Francisco Giants and be irrelevant for – the next nine years of your career? Well, I mean, the Giants are, they're pretty, I mean, it, it, let's just say a team like Texas, like the Rangers, a team with no history or anything. That's where you yes. place okay. off. Yes. I, I don't think they would do that after the contracts given out to Simeon and Seager, but I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But the Giants, the, I, I, I always read about the Giants would open up the, the, the checkbook. And yes, the Giants have had unbelievable success the last decade with three titles and and all these things like that. But it's still San Fran, and the Dodgers are still going to win that division by eight games. So it's like, well, Judge, yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I don't know. I, I just think that kind of guy with that kind of stature should be playing for one team and one team only. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And we were actually talking about that today of just like there's just not many guys left that are – you think of as one team – players like the guys like the Cal Ripkins of the world and the Jeters like it's just you know again it's a different world now with free agency and player empowerment and yep. all that stuff but it's nice to see someone like that who who hangs around so yeah we can um, only hope let me ask you something so let's talk a little bit about um you know our teams combined like what is your take on the Rays? Like as an outsider who probably knows more about the Rays just because you are friends with me and follow me on Twitter than <laughs> yeah. anything else. Like what is your perception of what the Rays, you know, over the last several years and this year in particular? And, you know, I'm curious what your thoughts on it and see if I can kind of validate what you're saying or tell you snacks, you're crazy as usual. <laughs> yeah, well, probably go that far. Um, <laughs> but over the last few years, it, I mean, it's no secret the Rays are the Yankee storm. Like they, the Yankees just cannot solve this team, and um, I have I I have the utmost respect for the Rays. I truly do. Like I obviously we we probably both hate Boston. I despise Boston. Um, guts. Look up in my behind me and see. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that picture. It's so incredible. 
<laughs> um, but I, I don't like, I don't hate or despise the Raiders. Like, I don't like them, obviously. They're a division rival and they've been kicking our ass for a long time. But in, to me, I almost, I almost appreciate it. You got a $40 million payroll beating the, sh- beating the snot out of a $300 million payroll left and right every year. Now, this year is a little different. And from the games I've watched, and I, I do, I read your tweets very closely because I do need to know what's going on with the Rays because that is, to me, even coming into the year, well, I, I thought Toronto would be a lot better than they were, but I think that was a lot of media hype and everything. I always knew the Rays were just a sound ball club and were going to be just dogs the whole time. So I, I read your tweets closely, and in the Rays-Yankees series so far this year, I feel like a lot of your cash tweets about the bullpen ring very much true. Now I can't sit here and say, I know everything about the guy, the arms in your bullpen. Cause I don't mm-hmm. um, shoot. I, I don't really know everything about all your starters either, but he's got, he's got quick yanks. He leaves guys in way too long. And I've just, I've seen this just from Yankee games and he's gotten bailed out a few times too during these Yankee games that they should have lost. Um, so I, I think he's, a, I think he's a weakness and I, I think Aaron Boone's a weakness for the Yankees too. We can talk about that later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, I think right now he's a weakness. I think, um, you know, him being like the, the guru, the him in Tampa Bay front office being like the guru of analytics and building a winner with $40 million to spend a year. Um, it's starting to get a little overblown. Um, you know, I, I think that only goes so, so far. I say this. I say this all the time that over 162 games, talent wins over everything else. You know, managing yep. affects a particular game, but you can't outmanage your talent. And you can't right. just – it's not a chess game over 162. If you have if you have the arms, you have the bats, you have the fielding, you have all that, you're going to win a lot of games. If you don't have the talent, you know, Casey Stengel didn't forget how to manage when he lost 120 games with the Mets in 62. They, you know, didn't have any talent around them. And you can see it even this year compared to last year. I mean, they now have 18 guys on the injured list right now. And that's where I was going to go. Yep. Watch, watching the Yankees race series. And I'm I'm like, who are these guys? Right. Like who who are, who are these players? The Rays are trotting out and they're still competitive. Like they still win games. They still win series. So um, I, they will always be a thorn on my side. And I I know they're going to make noise. And I, I know you're a little weary of them being in the playoffs, I think they definitely get in. Um, and I'd be, I'd be scared senseless of them if we ever have to play them. That's the yeah, one team I, I don't want to play. By the way, your boy uh, Stanton just hit a home run in the All-Star. Did he really? Two. Yeah. He's hit a blast. Loser. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just I, the problem, the difference in payroll, like the way this team is constructed, they have very, very solid starting pitching, a good bullpen, which every year they cobble together out of almost out of scratch. And enough young talent that by the time they're ready to go to arbitration and then for agency, they're traded away. So the problem this year is, you know, what they always have is, is depth is like, who's behind them. So if you ever have a rash of injuries, it's not like the Yankees can all of a sudden have a guy like, like a Matt Carpenter who they brought in primarily to be on the bench and come in and, and be effective. They don't have 13 home runs in 30 games. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. What, 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 are the, what the Rays have is they have a bunch of triple A guys who they were counting on, you know, prospects that either are a year or two away or just journeyman guys that they had to bring up. And they've been terrible. I mean, the Taylor Walls of the world, you know, the Brett Phillips, I know he's a, he's a folk hero for the Rays, but they're they're not major league players. They're not everyday right. guys. You know, uh, Brett Phillips is a perfect guy on your roster. If you need a late inning uh, defensive guy, a pinch runner, someone like that. And you do need those guys. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, that's where the Kevin Cass managing comes in. It's like, okay, I'm going to use this guy now in the eighth inning because I need a run or something or I need a defensive replacement. But when they have to play five days a week and these guys, they just can't hit. When we were playing the Yankees back in Yankee Stadium last month, you look at the, uh, the starting lineup. We had five guys, six guys hitting under 200. It was embarrassing. That's why yes. I, I think that was the series. I was talking. I was like, who, the, who are these people? Who are these guys? Exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's just been a problem this year. And I just, you know, there's still 75 games left 
you know, there's only, I think they're two and a half games up in the wild card race. I just can't see this team with this roster sustaining it. I mean, now, we're getting, an, you know, a, a Cy Young performance from Shane McCann, but McCann, but he only plays his every five games. Yeah, exactly. You know, and Rasmussen's that's... been paying good, but all of a sudden now, now the rest of the, 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 the back end of the rotation, you know, guys like Springs out probably for the year, you know, you know, the injuries kept piling up there. It's going to catch up with them. And, you know, I, I am not a believer in Boston. I think Boston sucks. I, I agree. I, I that pitch couldn't agree more. Yep. Yes, they are. And the bullpen's uh, terrible, too. Yeah. Toronto maybe needed that kick in the ass by getting a new manager. But they still have the bats. I know that a lot of it, they are media hype. But they're still – they're a team that can win 11 in a row really quickly and put up gaudy numbers all over the place. If they, if they have a stretch of like a 12 game schedule or a 12 game stretch of teams that are like below 500 and their bats get hot, they can easily win 10 out of, you know, 10 out of 12, 11 out of 12 and look where they are right there. So and that's a difference. And that's a difference between fifth in the wild card race and being second. Right. And, and knocking a team down. Right. Um, I mean, again, I am very appreciative of this and I love this race team for the fact that, you know, they're spunky and they're still fighting, but to me, we are just, uh, I'm on the deck of the Titanic, just trying to get the water out with a little tiny cup and it, it's <laughs> more and more water keeps coming on every time. <laughs> that was, that was very well put. Now, thank you. Now, who, who do you fear most taking over the raised spot in the wild card? Like, okay. So I know there's what three winners and there's three wild card teams. Is that how it's working now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if you had to take a guess, because I think the divisions are, well, I guess the Central's still up for grabs. We know the West and the East is probably one. Who would you say are the three wild card teams? I mean, if I was, I, I think I'm, Toronto, I'm curious to hear because you have said I, I've seen you I, say that you don't think Toronto, that Tampa Bay is going to do it, and I disagree with that. So I'm I'm curious to your opinion. Yeah. I would watch out. I mean, Seattle's on this in crazy run right now. They're not yeah. going to, this is not sustainable this level, but Washington is insane runs in the past of the year. They did it last year. Remember that was the whole, the big deal with them. Yeah. Um, well, West is, you know, OAL East and that win. Uh, watch out for Minnesota. You Minnesota, know, I, I like I don't Minnesota's know. lineup. I, I wish I had, I'm kind of like you, there yet with my team as far as you, you concerned about in the playoffs. It's, to me, it's just, you know, holding, it's more because I think we will just fall apart more than other teams going on big runs and overcoming us. Right. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's not like the Mets in the A, in the NL East where, Atlanta just got super hot to close the lead. This to me is just like, I feel there's that month and it could be in July. It could be in August where all of a sudden we're 10 and 21 and we're done. Yeah. I, I think I, I can, I can understand what you're saying, but at some point they're, you're going to get healthier. And I don't think Seattle's rise, like you said, is sustainable. And I think Tampa Bay has a huge, you know, a huge factor that they've been there before. They've been here the last few years. They know big game baseball and how to win games. And I think mm -hmm. that's really important. You know, people will they're, overlook that. Time. Two champs. Yeah. They're, they're no slaps. They, you know, they're no slouches. Hold on, Crank. Mm-hmm. It just cut out on me again. Is, it, is your Wi-Fi yeah. good? Your Wi-Fi yeah. good? You're going in and out. Yeah, it's, it's not the – it's kind of the, – the audio is fine. Yeah, well, uh, I, I don't mind the video. I, I I could do without seeing your ugly ass. I'm sure you could see do without seeing my ugly ass. I don't care, <laughs> but the, the, the audio is going in and out. Yeah, That's the, the audio is fine. Me. Okay. Um, oh, I missed your oh, last no, – You've been fine. You've been fine. I've been fine. Yeah, you you've been going out on my end. I haven't heard everything. So if you could just, I don't. What, what did you just last say so I could pick up and then? 
Uh, I was talking about – no, you were talking. You were going – you were talking about um, Seattle is unsustainable. Yeah, I just I don't I don't see another team that uh, is going to that, that they have the experience or, you know, the again just everything. I I think the Rays get they they get healthy. They're going to get hot. The Rays always do that. To me, at least, at least that's how it yeah. seems as a Yankee fan. The Rays just always seem to get hot and make a run. And I think that happens this year once these guys start coming off the IL and the Mariners come back down to life and the Orioles come back down to life. If the Rays are going to be right there. And for you, I would, I would have. It's no almost like attrition. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, some guys are coming back. Guys like Brandon Lauer, they're back. They, they came right, right before the break. But the Wander Franco, Franco's out for two months. You know, that's that's a big loss. That's huge. Uh, he's a lot the of the best pitching. The team. Yeah. Yeah, he's the best player on the team, and he's been banged up all year. He's never really been healthy this whole season. So it's been kind of like you're. You don't have him and you don't have Lau. Those are the two guys with, you know, the the, the power bats, the best li- bats in the lineup, no matter – in spite of what Lau does in the playoffs. It it, it also just re- requires having these scrubs coming up and play these 4A guys also. And, and those... I think if, 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 if we could just hang around long enough so we can have three really healthy starting pitchers going into the postseason, then I think all bets are off. Anything can happen. Just get in there and we'll see what I happens. I just – I just don't mm-hmm. know. I wish there was only a month left in the season and not all of August, all of I September, know. because I think nothing but badness can happen right now. So. Two and a half months still to go. Hey, listen, I know you think that, but as a Yankee fan with a 14 game lead with two and a half months left, if that lead starts dwindling to like six, could you imagine the pressure that's going to be on those guys? Well, and it's, it's very possible. It's very possible. It depends on why. I mean, if you get into September first and you're still up by ten games, you're going to see yeah, them take that. They'll, they'll 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 take their their foot off the gas. You again, you're going to have some load management. You're going to have Triple A guys playing, and you know the lead is reduced to five or six. Who cares? If they just start legitimately, like all of a sudden the starting pitching is falling apart, these guys getting into slumps, guys starting to get hurt. That's a whole other ball game. Yes, you're right. It would it would have to depend. You're right. It would have to depend on how they get. Or how that lead does shrink in watching them play. You're right, um, but I, like I, I keep saying, I, I I'm still weary. I'm still weary, and I I think I think um, I think from your standpoint, from what you've said about the Yankees, is pretty spot on. I I would like you to go in to a little bit more depth about it because you know I, I gave my race because I want. I want your opinion on on what you what you genuinely think the Yankees actually are because I know you're a, you're a big Yankee hater. So <laughs> I I am, but I also am a firm believer in something I call it. It is something that you can't define. You can't. There's no statistic for it. It is when everything is just going your way and you are winning games you have no business winning, and it's little things like. Okay, we're playing the Rays in a three-game series, but we're not going to face Jay McClanahan because that's the way the rotation falls. And we are losing 7-3 going into the ninth inning, and somebody drops a fly ball in right field, and it leads to a five-run ninth. And all these things happen. I mean, it happens. It doesn't happen every year, but it happens. The 86 Mets, to me, are the greatest example of a team with it. And I really think this Yankee team has it. It's that, you know, the come from behind wins, the walk off wins, the how many wins they have with the last at bat. Guys like Cortez just being like out of nowhere to being what, what they were in the first half. Matt Carpenter, we mentioned him before, like off the scrap heap. Yeah. You know, you know Trevino, all stars, things like that. These, these, again, if you played this season again from, and everybody being healthy, Judge had a little bit. And I think Stanton had a little bit, but nothing of any one significance. Stint, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, but nothing, nothing of any real significance. But you know, if if they played this season exactly the same way again, is all these things going to happen? I don't know. It's not, you know, you, you can't replicate it. You can't define it. They just kind of have it this year, and, and that's what scares me. When it when a team has it, and you're facing them, you're pissing in the wind because you're fighting Mother Nature, and I feel that's what the Yankees are this year. Again, you and, look at their lineup, and just on paper, you're like, it's a good lineup. 
not scary, but then again, you look at the results. You look at how many home runs they've hit, and they score so many runs because of the home run and timely hits and timely homers, and the the, the, the bullpen's rock solid. And it's just one of those, you know, I don't worry about the regular season because to me, baseball is two seasons. It's a regular season, which, you know, the best team wins the division over 162, but the playoffs are a crapshoot. And 100%. I don't know if the Yankees are built for the postseason. And I, they haven't been for 15 years. They've not been a, nope. a team built for the postseason. And I think I know people that say, you know, they want to get rid of the, uh, of uh, Cashman. They're like, oh, he sucks. It's everything. It's you build a team to get to the playoffs. You don't build a team for a short series. Like even this talk now about. Yankees are concerned about Houston. Well, don't worry about Houston. Worry about the team you're going to face in the ALDS first because yep. it's a crapshoot. You know, one yep. bad turn around the rotation, you're out. I mean, we were a better team than Boston last year. We won 100 games. They just got hot for three games. Our pitching was bad for three games. We were out. That's so, baseball. That's baseball. But I think the Yankees scare me, and I think – they certainly have a better chance than normal for them beating this drought of not winning World Series because I think they have it this year. And you know it when you see it, and, and I see it with this team. And you know what? I, I I don't take those comments lightly either because I know that pains you to say. And I I and I, I know I'm I'm in the old school too. Like I, the it factor, the just it, I, I get it. Maybe I'm blinded by fandom and just the fact that I see things that I don't want to see and mm-hmm. they're just so good. Uh, but everything that you said, it lines up. The way they've won some of these games is just ridiculous. The breaks that they've caught is ridiculous. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes it just – it is that it factor that you have. And The, the, last, uh, the last Red Sox World Series they, that they won, that was an it. And, oh yeah! You know, thank oh, yeah. God that won't happen again. No, 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 no. All right. So you know, in conclusion, we both feel. I think you feel better than I feel about my team, but you have you know cautiously optimistic. I am cautiously concerned. <laughs> I, I know there's still a lot of baseball to be played left. I think the biggest factor for both of our teams, we both agreed, is the health of our teams mm-hmm. um, to be determined. I think you just staying healthy, us trying to get healthy. Uh, but yeah. Literally, like the, the opposite, the opposite spectrum. We stay healthy, you get healthy. So it's yeah, like- exactly. And if we kind of can meet in the middle and both get into the postseason, I think it'll be really exciting. You know, definitely we'll no doubt we will burn up Twitter and you know, uh, <laughs> snacks. I'll definitely have you have you on here again. You know, certainly as we start getting closer, as we do our AL East check ins, and you know, we're all nice and friendly right now. But you know, something will happen. You know, we'll start playing beanball again or whatever with Yankees and Rays and. We'll be at each other's throats, but uh, oh, that's right, that's right. Even though I will say, I thought we were pretty tamed and respectful for the Rangers Lightning. It was, it was pretty good, and you know why? Because the thing is, I don't hate the Rangers. I, you know, it's yeah, just, I, I don't hate the Lightning. It's like, yeah, it's, it's just yeah. you know, you know, it's just kind of it is what it is. You know, it's just, but uh, you know, this is this series. This this means know, more. This, this rivalry this, means this more. It. Yeah, and you know, does. in baseball is unlike any other sport because it's your daily soap opera right it's your you know football is once a week it's all your emotion on sunday and you just you know this you spend is every the rest night of it thinking about it but this is every night a new story is written and, and your emotions can go from this to this really really quickly and uh yeah we'll de- snack we'll definitely have you on again to talk you know raise yankees um how can they find you as they say yeah, how can you find me? And I would love to come on. Maybe uh, maybe mid mid some summer push for both teams. We'll uh, we'll run it back and see where we are. But yeah, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, it's snacks. It's S N A C K S. I think that's how you spell it. Underscore B D G E. Um, you know, uh, we just uh, just wrapped up. Me and just what? Me and Justin <laughs> just wrap, wrapped up bleeding blue, which is unfortunate. And I know these Florida people don't care, so it doesn't matter. But if you want to find me on Twitter. Snacks underscore BDG. I tweet a lot more about other nonsense than just sports, wrestling, Sopranos, music. Um, I'm kind of like Crank a lot where I, it's our outlet and we say whatever the, the hell we want to say. And uh, yeah, so I appreciate you having me on, my friend. I look forward to coming back on and I look forward to one heated summer of baseball. And uh, I'm yeah. pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah. 
And you can catch me as always at the Cranky Fan. Uh, check out also uh, the Just Giants podcast with myself and the Football Grump. Uh, we're getting ready for training camp for the Giants, and you know we got another show coming up later on this week where we're going to have another big guest talking more Rays baseball, and we'll we'll, we'll talk uh, Florida football next week as we get starting ready for training camp for that also. So. For the one and only, the lovable snacks, this is the Cranky Fan saying good night. <laughs>